it used to be a black suit, um, and he went white uh, to hide the flower stains. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is... Um, that sounds reasonable. That sounds like a yeah. real story. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, that's oh. what I, I actually... Uh, oh. <laughs> I wasn't. Hey, I, 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 I'm sorry, Greg, but I don't really depend on the Warren report for facts and figures. It's Bob and Tom tonight, starring Chick McGee, Christy Lee, Josh Arnold, Ace Cosby, Pat Godwin, Willie Griswold, and Tom Griswold. We were talking to Mr. Oske about his um, his um, domestic situation. Yeah. There are a number of um, young ladies living in your abode. Yes, sir. Including your girlfriend. Yes. And apparently there's a, a painter's convention. And her two teenage will. daughters, yes. Mm. And um, Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. yes. And, oh. uh, and uh, I, I just mentioned, do you have a... Uh, a well, Oscar brought it up, actually. Oh, okay. Do you have a, a little sign saying, do not flush? You know, right, course, yeah. Very important. Right. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that you had a, a, an issue with the septic tank. Yes. Uh, what was the conversation again? I believe the uh, the septic guy said it looks like you have a, a couple septic rats floating around in there. Some uh, cotton right. rat right. mice. <laughs> um, <laughs> this comes to us from Robert. Uh, I worked for a company that was a sewage infrastructure. We also had a, a honey dipper service. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, chatting with the homeowner during a conversation that came up uh, that it was uh, this guy and his wife uh, living in the home. Just those those two. And uh, they popped the lid of the septic tank, and there were a large number of condoms on the surface. Ooh. He told the homeowner, please don't flush the condoms. They'll clog the drain field. Uh. The homeowner said, I don't use condoms. Uh -oh. But your wife's boyfriend does. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The last sentence he turned and walked into the house. Never Yikes. had to return. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay, so you'll be, <clears throat> there you go. Just another reason to wow. learn how to use your septic system. Certainly. Now, um, remember what Chris Rock always said. If you cheat, you're going to get caught. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> Now, uh, Christy Lee is at the news desk. What have you got over there? Gangs of macaque monkeys have taken over <laughs> Thai City. Monkey gangs reportedly hooked on sugary drinks. Oh, man, they're great, they're great, they're great. They've been rampaging through a Thailand town, mugging tourists for food and their belongings in a fresh wave of terror. You've seen these pictures? Is yes. Is there any reason why monkeys can't talk? Isn't that the only thing that they lack? I think that the structure of their mouth probably isn't. Mm, I don't think so. I think all they have to do is, like, get mad enough to be... Oh, that's what Planet of the Apes movies taught us, though. They had to... <laughs> get and, mad enough to speak? And their first word's no, because they keep hearing no all the time. This is happening in the tourist hotspot of Lopuri. Rival monkey gangs fight, and they have made going out nearly impossible for local residents. <laughs> while the smell of the macaque <laughs> excrement has grown unbearable. Oh, here you go, Tom. Of course, you had to put that in the story. I did, this is from the New York Times. Locals <laughs> trying to appease the primates with snacks have only exacerbated the issue. That, that too. <laughs> As their supply of free junk food dwindled during the pandemic, their behavior has become more aggressive. The government has now relaunched a serialization program in effort to curb the growing monkey population, and they hope to neuter 500 monkeys. How do you do that? You know 500 monkeys sitting on a wall. You know Can you I mean? eat monkey meat? Hmm. I guess you could. I, I, would have, I, would think I think so. uh, mutilated monkey meat or little <laughs> little dirty birdie feet. Or mm. Isn't there a restaurant macaques in Bangkok? That's a lot of dick energy no, right there. that's not a restaurant. A lot of what? <laughs> no. I just like that he said Are energy. You? Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Okay. He was desperate the, there for a uh, second. What was the phrase that I heard on a chairlift? Some guy said. Uh, oh, here we what go. What was that phrase I heard on a chairlift, <laughs> Willie? You if might have been with me. You say objectionable things on chairlifts. <laughs> no, I didn't. Really? I was listening to saying, these two bros. I get that you bros. still like. I get that you still like Woody Allen, but it's not the time to defend him in public <laughs> on a chairlift. Right? <laughs> you don't need to do that. I get it. Manhattan's a good movie. We all enjoyed yeah, it. Well, that's <laughs> one of his le least. Uh, I mean, there are so many other really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> but he's potentially a monster. So let's just not talk about him in a <laughs> And now, Tom Griswold angers America. <laughs> I can't. Oh. Uh, can you get that? Hello, Bob and Tom show. Oh, this is Dick Energy. Did I win? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dick. Can no. I get call? No, thanks for calling, though. All right. Well, dang it. All right. Maybe next time. 
<laughs> well, you happy now? <laughs> We have a uh, a guest, no. and it's it's a comedian Greg Warren, and and above his uh, right shoulder, oh my god, is a, a photograph of Warren Zevon. Well done, oh, sir. I thought that was uh, Mark Christopher Warren. So did I. <laughs> From Bass Talk, no. Okay. It's the great Thank musician, uh, the, the late great Warren Zevon. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, hey, Greg, how are you? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Good. Worse now that you're here. You. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, so it's a tough room. <laughs> Yeah. Do you Usually have Warren's? A, you you think you look like Warren's Yvonne? Is that is that why you have the picture? No, no, there? chick. I thought I'd uh, feature a different uh, Warren each uh, every each week. week. Oh, See? oh, well, that's Warren exciting. Report. Last week it was Justice Earl Warren. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. think it was. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I think it was. Oh, I th I thought it was uh, the Wright brothers. No, no, no. He figured a picture of him. Remember, there was a the picture. pictures in the Son subject aren't the same. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, that what a great. What a great piece this is! Right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's really getting off to a good start. Uh, uh, very funny. Uh, every time uh, Greg uh, Greg is uh, responsible for the uh, Amazon Television special known as um, "Where the Field Corn Grows." Hey! Very good. I, I, keep, hey! I always want to say bingo. I always want to say "Children of the Corn," but that's <laughs> <laughs> different. That's very different. Hey, no, it's I'm a looking much, at your, much more successful piece. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm looking at your schedule. Is this correct, Greg? Spokane coming up this weekend. Is that yeah. right? Got the, yeah. Got the Spokane Comedy Club. Are you driving that one? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fly that one, Chick. It's, <laughs> it's a good call. <laughs> it's a good bit from St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, then And then it's uh, the Funny Bone in Dayton, February 11 and 12. Then a whole bunch of stops, including uh, the famous Comedy Attic in Bloomington in, in early March. Then you're going to be in Pittsburgh, Des Moines, and uh, St. Charles, Missouri. A bunch of great stuff coming up for Greg, so you get a chance to see him live and in person. Now, the way this uh, new show works is you typically take a topic and um, educate yes. educate us on it. Do, do we have uh, a new topic today? We do, uh, Tom. I, I want to talk about Colonel Sanders today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do we get free I chicken? I, th <laughs> no. I, I thought it was... A, yeah, I'll, yeah, it's on the way. Okay, it's, great. Uh, it's on the way, yeah. um, Now, of course, Colonel Sanders, uh, it's not a military title. That's an honorific. Uh, it's a Kentucky colonel, basically uh, an ambassador of goodwill. Uh, the governor of Kentucky can make you a Kentucky colonel, and it is uh, not an exclusive club. There's there's a lot of them. <laughs> oh. uh, at one year, uh, the, one of the governors made 15,000 people colonels. Oh, my so, gosh. Oh, my. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, when I go to... When I go to Kentucky, I I call everybody Colonel. Uh, we got a caramel macchiato for Greg. Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> Odds are. <laughs> uh, uh, and the um, you know he he wears that white suit. He wore it. Uh, he just decided to start wearing it as, as branding, mm -hmm. and he wore it in public every time he went out in public for twenty years. Uh, it used to be a black suit, um, and he went white. Uh, to hide the flower stains. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is... Um, that sounds reasonable. That sounds like a yeah. real story. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's oh. what I, I actually... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't... Hey, I, 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 I'm sorry, Greg, but I don't really <laughs> depend on the Warren Report for facts and figures. <laughs> no, this is... This is um, Chick, I know you uh, uh, think of me as a comedian, but this is hard-hitting news type okay. stuff. No, uh, no. Yeah. no. Greg, I know that you, both you and I are uh, big into uh, crossword puzzles. Yeah. And, yeah. and the word colonel has always bothered me. I learned the word colonel yeah. in the correct spelling, of, as most of you did reading Sad Sack Comics. And, uh, no, we didn't. And <laughs> colonel is spelled like colonel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no R anywhere in there. It yeah, always kind of bugged it. me. Yeah. And uh, is there an explanation for that? Uh, I, I believe that's next week's report. <laughs> <laughs> See, what Tom really? likes to do, instead of uh, letting you do your report, just ham-fistedly jump in the middle of it. And yeah, I was, uh, we're going we're to really dive into that next week. Um, this joke uh, should have been told about a minute and 30 seconds ago. Uh, he had a white suit to uh, oh, hide the flower stains. Right. Uh, okay. That's why I, I uh, just purchased a mustard-colored suit. 
<laughs> the implication being that you eat a lot of mustard? I, I, I spill a lot of mustard on myself. Again, the time okay. I'm, I'm okay, sorry. Yeah. 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 Listen, listen, slightly off topic, Greg. I, I blame uh, myself. I, I, I feel terrible about this, but every time I go to uh, your favorite restaurant... I take a picture cheesecake. of uh, a cheesecake factory. I take a picture of the iced tea and send it to you. I had not been to the cheesecake factory since the pandemic started, but I took um, Finn there uh, twice over the weekend. Oh, that's a good because uh, she's in the you know wheelchair temporarily, so we're spending a lot of time at the mall where it's yeah. warm enough yeah. to tool around. And I, I didn't get iced tea, and I so I didn't take a picture of it to send you. So sorry to get off topic there, but maybe <laughs> well, we can know, go there Stacey, today. This is really great iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't think that diversion was worth it. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so uh, uh, the colonel, uh, uh, his father died when he was young and his uh, mother uh, raised him uh, and his uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, but she worked, so he had to cook for the family. Uh, and he cooked full meals for them when he was seven. Whoa. And there's this, there's this excerpt that says, when he was seven, he was good at uh, vegetables and bread and improving in meat. That's all they had to say <laughs> about the seven-year-old cook that he was just improving. I mean, Harlan, this chicken tastes like a five-year-old made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, Frying so chicken at seven? Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, just God. improving, though. He wasn't all that good. Um, <laughs> He had a lot of jobs. Uh, he left home when he was 14, uh, didn't like his stepdad, and he had joined the military, uh, forged documents, joined the military uh, at 16, spent a year in the Army, and then he did all kinds of stuff. He, was, he worked on the railroad. Uh, he sold insurance. Uh, he was a ferry boat captain. He bought a lamp company. And uh, this is my favorite. He went to law school, got a law degree, and then um, he, he was a lawyer, uh, but in one of the trials, he got in a fist fight with his client and was disbarred. <laughs> and that was the end of his law career. Nice. That sounds like yeah. something Tom would Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. This is why I never yeah. became a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah I would have been got in said, a fight well, with the judge. <laughs> like Tom, he, he got in his way a lot uh, uh, early on in his career. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Shell Oil gave him a gas station and he opened this gas station and he started uh, preparing meals there. Uh, in his house, and people liked him, and then he expanded to a restaurant, uh, and that's when uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken sort of started. Now, there's there's three or four things uh, that happened at that time that really uh, were important. One, um, he uh, he discovered that pan frying, that's the best way to fry chicken. It's the tastiest way, but it takes way too long, 30 minutes. Uh, and then uh, 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 deep frying, that dries out the chicken. So he developed this thing called the uh, Pressure frying. Uh, uh, pressure frying is Colonel Standers standing behind the cook saying, fry that chicken or I will beat your ass like I beat my law client in 46. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he, uh, it, it was uh, some sort of pressure cooker thing and it, uh, it revolutionized chicken. Um, and then uh, there was a rival gas station owner across town uh, that got mad because Harlan had too many signs up. <laughs> so he painted over one of Harlan's signs and Harlan took a shell executive over to talk to this guy. And that guy shot the shell executive and killed him. Oh my gosh. Uh, Harlan shot that guy, but he didn't kill him. That guy went to jail, that gas station went out of business and it really uh, cleared the way for Harlan to take over. The <laughs> All right. Well, who knew? Is, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, he, uh, he, his first franchise uh, was in 52 uh, in Salt Lake City, believe it or not. Hmm. Uh, he went out there and, and he, he sold his recipe to this guy. And the guy tripled his business uh, overnight. And uh, the guy paid Harlan uh, four cents for every chicken that he sold. Uh, I guess, on the honor system. So uh, he's starting to do well. And then um, a, a, a few things happened. Um, it, the business took off, uh, but uh, he uh, he opened another restaurant and then another one, and they, there was a fire. I-75 uh, went was built and went around his restaurant in Kentucky, so he had to shut it down. Oh. World War II happened that, uh, you know, cut down on tourism. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> it did. It weren't a lot of tourists in, in WW2. Sure. Uh, in, um, in 63, uh, he trademarked uh, Finger Lickin' Good, which um, 
Probably not a good slogan in COVID times, but back then it was, uh, it was, it was great. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would say one of the most recognizable sure. of any Absolutely. slogans. Yeah. Uh, isn't that how you get worms, though, licking your fingers? What? I don't think so. I've heard that. Other no. people's no. fingers. Mm -hmm. See, Chip knows. Uh, Never heard that. Uh, uh, um, so anyways, he, he does well with the restaurant, but he has a lot of bad luck. And when he's 65... He basically has no restaurant because they're out of business. All he's getting is that four cents a chicken. It doesn't add up to a lot. And uh, he, in Social Security, 105 bucks a month. So he decides, I'm going to go out and double down on this franchise stuff. At 65, he gets in the car, takes two pressure cookers, and just drives all over the country. He stops in restaurants and says, hey, please let me make chicken for your employees. If they like it, let me make chicken for your customers. If they like it, let's work out a deal. And that's how he built Kentucky Fried what? Chicken. And he got 65. It. 65 in the nice. back of a car. He's driving all over. Uh, at that time, he uh, reopened a restaurant in Shelbyville, Kentucky. That was the, the headquarters. And his his uh, mistress, uh, Claudia, later his second wife, would send out the the 11 herbs and spices. He didn't trust people to, to, to give him the recipe. Hmm. So... Um, <laughs> He's in, and then that thing went international. I mean, and, and in 64, he sold the business uh, uh, to these guys. He sold it $2 million, and then he got 40000 bucks a year, later 75000 to go around and be Colonel Sanders. And this is my favorite time of Colonel Sanders' life. Um, he didn't much care for what the new guys did with his recipes. So he would just show up randomly surprisingly at Kentucky fried chicken restaurants, he'd go in and he'd order it. And if he didn't like it, he would throw the food on the floor. <laughs> he your guy. He right. threw, I, I mean, I'm not a fan of the cell phone camera era, but I would pay big money to see a YouTube <laughs> of Colonel Sanders throwing chicken on the floor, man. And he's got he's, the suit on and the goatee and the whole yeah, deal. Yeah, he's, he's got the white suit and the, he never left home without it, Tom. Uh, he's throwing chicken on the floor. His big problem was the gravy. He said it tastes like a wallpaper slop. Um, and then he said, uh, what did he say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, crispy recipe is nothing but the nothing in the world but a damn fried dough ball stuck on some chicken. Which um, I don't know. A fried dough ball is a donut. I I would eat some donut chicken. It doesn't sound <laughs> terrible. Crispy is great. Yeah. 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 Sounds yeah. pretty good. It's yeah. pretty good to me. Uh, um, and then he was uh, he, he swore a lot. They said he, he was very very profane. Uh, and he was he would go around and be like. An ambassador, you know, he was on talk shows. He was sure. on like the Merv Griffin show. He was at all these public events, and he was always like very, very flattering uh, to the ladies. But uh, I read this article in the New Yorker, and it said that um, if you got the mic really close, you could hear him muttering under his breath, mm, "That girl's let herself go. Look at the size of that one." I don't know when I've ever seen so many fat ones. Lord, look at them waddle. That's, uh, which, wow. I mean, he, he did say that, which I mean, Harlan, you opened a fried chicken restaurant. I mean, it's, it, and now you're making fun of people being fat. <laughs> and I don't remember the Colonel being all that thin, to be honest. With right. You, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's mostly what I have on the Colonel. However, uh, I thought we'd dive into the chicken segment a little bit. Uh, you know, this is on some levels a business report. Chick, uh, what do you think the, the top five chicken restaurants are today? Oh, the top five today. It's got to be, yeah, KFC, uh, uh, Popeye's. Popeyes. Uh, is Churches in there somewhere, I would think? Maybe. Churches is not, is not a top five, man. What about uh, Raising uh, Cane's? Raisin Cane's Willie, excellent point. They huh. are a fast riser. They are they're sitting Never at number heard five. Of them. Real yeah, good. Yeah, Raisin tenders. Cane's. It's chicken fingers. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. are missing the big oh, one. Oh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A oh, wow. is the number one by far. There you they go. are doing it with half the outlets of KFC, uh, but they're number one in chicken. I think like number three in all of fast food. Wow. Uh and the only other one you guys missed was a Zaxby's, which is sort of the Oh, Zaxby's, uh, sure, sure. Zaxby's was Raising Cane's before uh, Raising Cane's. Oh, they got Raisin a good Cane's, banana milkshake there. Really? Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, a, a couple of sort of distant ones in the top 10. Chick mentioned uh, churches. 
there's there's two of my favorites. Um, El Pollo Loco out in uh, the West Coast, which oh, is, that, uh, of course, crazy the, chicken. Yeah, the crazy chicken is is an excellent place. Yeah, yeah. There's no, isn't there a, a one in Boston, the Great Zaxby, kind of a literary? Oh God! Wow! Oh. Oh. In Boston, they got big yeah. eggs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If only Josh were here to acknowledge the yeah. occasional literary uh. joke. And the term <laughs> joke is somewhat um, uh, so. Uh, can you run them back for me, uh, one to ten, will you, or at least one, one to five? Yeah, sure. We got. To, and now these are 2019. Unless uh, uh, Tom gives me a budget uh, for research, uh, I can't get up with these numbers. Yeah, forget that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Chick fil A number one, KFC number two, Popeyes three, then followed by Zaxby's, Raisin Cane's, Wingstop, Bojangles, which is a, a sort of a southern biscuit mm -hmm. and chicken chain, mm. El Pollo Loco, mm. uh, Churches, and then. Um, Boston market, which, you know, uh, at one time was a pretty big deal. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the last one that I want to mention is, is my favorite chicken restaurant. It's called Pollo Tropical and it's a, it's a Cuban, uh, themed restaurant down in uh, South Florida. It's outstanding. Mm. So if you ever get a chance, get yourself some Pollo Tropical and I, and chick, I got to tell you the crazy chicken, pretty good food. Oh yeah, yeah, I lived oh, yeah I've had it. Yeah. Yeah. Are they yeah. are they still doing the uh, variety of actors portraying Colonel Sanders? I know they had Norm Macdonald, they Reba had McIntyre, Daryl Hammond. The yeah. last spot I saw, they didn't show anybody. Rob they just Riggle. had the hands, oh. and they were, had, had a voiceover guy. Yeah. And maybe it, that'll be a Super Bowl commercial. The maybe. new one. It seems like they. Well, have I, uh, Jess, that. I yeah. was sort of hoping this was going to be an audition. I don't know if you guys heard me earlier. I thought I sounded like Tim Wilson. A lot yeah. Like that's why I, I thought I thought you were channeling your Tim Wilson there. Sorry, not, not where he was going. No, with it. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a southern accent. A great Ronnie report. Van Zandt. Ronnie Van Zandt would have beat the hell out of Kid Rock. <laughs> oh, thank you. Greg Warren is one of my favorite comedians, uh, and you can you, see Greg. Greg uh, he'll be in Spokane at the Spokane Comedy Club, formerly Jeremy's. Okay. Oh, okay. What Jer I'm Jeremy. Jeremy spoke. And <laughs> I guess he spoke too much. <laughs> wow. That was weird. <laughs> I love it. A little bit of a <laughs> Pearl, Pearl Jam. jam. Yeah, yes. Pearl Jam. We got it. Hey, Greg, that was a great, that was really fun, Greg. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Uh, Bye, we'll, we'll have a new uh, new Warren picture next week. Okay. Okay. Can't wait. Good, good, good. Watch the entire show live or on demand at bobandtom.com or listen live with the Bob and Tom app. And be sure to tune in next time for more Bob and Tom Tonight.